What's going on? So today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to perform a successful creative test. Now, the whole purpose of doing a creative test is so you're not blatantly wasting money on creatives that were destined to fail from the start because you had no true insights on them. Now, a big mistake that people make is they think they have to dump hundreds of dollars into each unique creative in order to draw genuine insights to see, oh, is this a winner or do I have to turn this one off? But what I'm going to be explaining here today is how we can actually go about testing each unique creative for only a couple dollars per creative. And using this method, we're still able to draw substantial insights to decide which creative is a winner before we move on to the actual campaign. This way, you only have to spend tens of dollars up front to decide which creative is going to be a winner. And then from there, you can dump hundreds of dollars into the specific winners themselves rather than wasting tons of money up front and overall just having less budget to work with because you wasted so much time on shitty creatives. All right, enough chit chat. Let's get into it. So to start, you're going to click the create button and then we are going to do a traffic campaign. Now, the reason we're going to do a traffic campaign is because this is by far the cheapest cost per click campaign that we're able to do. That being said, the lead quality itself is usually poorer, and that's why I recommend doing an engagement campaign to generate high intent leads. But for the sake of generating insights and deciding if a creative inherently is a winner based on results, we are going to use a traffic campaign. So if you've seen any of my previous videos, I'm going to want you to do manual traffic campaign just because this gives us the most autonomy to choose our inputs. That being said, Meta still has a lot of underlying authority with where the ad is going, but this at least gives us a little bit more wiggle room to decide where it's going to be going to. All right, so I just changed the names of each levels just so you understand what I'm going to be referencing. So this top one is our campaign level. Uh, this middle one is our ad set level. And this bottom one is our creative level where the actual creative will be going. So starting off at creative level, there's literally nothing you have to change here. We're going to be controlling budget and ad set level. And I'll even show how we're going to go about setting up budget where each ad will automatically get turned off. And the whole point of this is so we're able to draw equal insights because each ad will reach a certain threshold of impressions as we'll show later how to configure and it overall just allows us to have equal measurements. So moving on into ad set level, make sure messaging apps is clicked. And then as far as performance goals go, there's a few different you can choose from. So for the purpose of the creative test, what I'm going to want you guys to do is either do maximum number of link clicks or maximum number of conversations. So for preface, if you're doing a campaign and the purpose of it is a profile visit or you're doing a lead form where you're asking for user information, then do a link click because this will prompt a learn more button. However, if you're doing a engagement campaign in which you're trying to incentivize people to DM you, then go ahead and switch it over to maximize number of conversations. And then instead of a learn more button, it'll be a send message button and you'll get more people messaging over to your account. Of course, if you're doing it on Facebook, then messenger, but I'm going to be doing this one on Instagram. So what I'd recommend you do here for budgeting is do something relatively high. Now, as I explained a bit earlier, and I'll get into it more later, we're automatically going to be killing these ads after they only spend a couple bucks anyway. So what I do is do like a $50 a day budget just so we can creative test like that. And in the matter of a day, we have all our analytics already. If you put it at a low budget, it just takes a couple days for a creative test to run when in the grand scheme of things, it'll end up spending the same value anyway because we're killing the campaign automatically. So I'd say 50 bucks and you'll be able to do a creative test in a matter of 24 hours. Now, moving down to our audience settings, again, this is going to be a relatively broad creative test. That being said, if you already know your target market, I highly suggest you go ahead and add those inputs in here as it'll make the results a little bit more accurate. But for the sake of this video, I'm just going to leave it broad. But if you are curious on how to strategically set up a custom audience, I'm going to go ahead and leave a link to my other video right here in which I explain in detail how to go about targeting your demographic. Now, finally, at the bottom of ad set level, go ahead and switch this over to manual placements and make sure only the platform that you're wanting the ad to be seen is selected, in this case, Instagram. All right, so now in creative level, this is where you actually set your ad up. So you're going to click image or video, depending on what you're going to do. I highly recommend doing still frames if you're looking for uh, cheaper cost per click. Videos are a lot more personable, but because of that, it's harder to get across to a lead, especially if you're doing a traffic campaign on a fresh face rather than retargeting on previous engagers. So it's up to you based on your use case, but I've seen still frames to work really well right now if you're pushing a high ticket offer. And another cool thing, if you do have an Instagram or a Facebook account link and you want to solicit one of your posts, you literally just have to click use existing post and then select post, go over to Instagram or Facebook if that applies to you. And then you can select any of your reels there as long as they're royalty free music. I'm going to go ahead and just import one though to show you guys this too. Here's where you add your copy. Now, if you're doing a creative test, I highly recommend that every single creative 
has the same copy. So you have a control variable across the board. What I mean by that is you really should only be changing one variable at a time. So let's say that it's the same visual on screen, but you change the copy in the visual itself. And then from there, we'd also want to keep the description consistent. Another way to go about it is to do the same wording on screen, but different visuals. As you can see, there's many different combinations you can go about this, but in order to get really equivalent metrics to work off of, I highly recommend just copying the same exact description across the board. And if you notice, we only have one creative level set so far. That's because we're going to set this one up and then go and duplicate to where we only have to plug and play the different creatives, and it makes this process a lot faster. All right, so here's where we're going to add our creative. Click Next. I would go ahead and switch it to original if you're doing a still frame. It's funny because sometimes meta will pop up this warning, but rest assured, it's never been an issue. In fact, it says that it's going to be automatically cropped, but once you go over to next, uh, skip through this AI crap, click done. And once the preview pops up, as you can see, it auto fits anyway. So it's never been an issue for me. Uh, don't be worried on that. And you also see it says warning. Boom. Now it says check. Meta is super finicky with that stuff, so don't get overwhelmed if you see an error at first because it may be nothing. All right, cool. So since we did link clicks, as you can see here, this is that learn more button I was telling you guys about. And if instead I did a campaign to do conversation started, it would say send message here. But you can also add different CTAs if you want shop now, if you're an e-com person. But um, if you're selling a high ticket offer or you just have some sort of service based offer, definitely go with learn more. It's overall going to be the most consistent one to get people to actually inquire. All right, next step is you have to set up a trigger. So if someone inquires through the send message or learn more button, they can get prompted with a DM. And especially if you have a backend automation set up, like my company uses AI appointment setters, this just becomes a seamless integration and it's really just passing it over to the next step in the pipeline. So here's a few examples that I personally have. It's annoying that it says question. You'll see when it auto generates question and automated response. But if you want the user to automatically be prompted to just send the trigger word, then put it up in the question thing. And as you can see here, they just have to click the send button and then it'll automatically send that trigger word. And then this is kind of a little auto-generated text that'll pop up. So let's say they click send message or they click learn more, but they haven't pushed forward yet then this DM will automatically get generated for them. So it becomes extremely obvious that they have to DM this to get whatever lead asset you're promoting. All right, then finally, once you've got all that situated, you just go to duplicate. Let's say you've got seven other unique ones. You just bump up the number there, click duplicate, and it'll copy everywhere. Of course, change the naming convention and then the actual creative itself, but keep everything else the same. And this will allow us to get the most accurate metrics. All right, cool. So we have our ad campaign set up. This is just the example that I built for us, right? So we have to take it a step further in order to automatically get each creative to be killed on its own like this, where they literally just shut off. Uh, we need to set up a custom rule on ads manager. This will act to kill each creative once it reaches a certain number of impressions. So what you're going to do is highlight all you're going to click this more tab and we're going to click create a new rule, then click next. So in this screen, um, we'll say hey, it can be whatever, but kill at 500 impressions. So I'd recommend anywhere from 400 to 600 impressions is a substantial amount to draw legitimate insights from. So keep it at that. It doesn't have to be anything more. It's very straightforward. And then uh, action, we're going to turn off the ads. You're going to switch cost per result to impressions. So when impressions are greater than 500, click add. We're going to keep this time frame. We're going to keep continuously, keep the notifications on so you know that they're getting killed. And then click create. And it's set. It's already applied. That's all there is to it. So now, um, if and when you ran a campaign like this, they would automatically be killed. And again, if you have it on a $50 a day budget, you can get this knocked out in 24 hours and then be ready to go for your actual campaign. So I wanted to show you guys a live example of a creative test that I actually ran. So um, just to show you the actual inputs. So these are the ads I ran. As you can see, I have multiple variants as far as the visual goes. And see with these top five up here, we have identical copy, but the actual visuals themselves change. Here, we have the same exact visuals, but the copy itself is changing. Agency offers, coaching businesses, consulting businesses. And surprisingly, simplistic ones like this, where you literally just write it up in the notes, take a screenshot, perform quite decently as well. And then down here is just kind of a mixed bag, checking out different copies. I even did one with my girlfriend because I found it has a pretty decent click-through rate as far as people actually stopping to read what's on the screen. So all 14 creatives that you're seeing here is exactly what's been inputted into Ads Manager. And if you look at the bottom, I literally spent 43 bucks, guys, in order to draw these insights. And if you look at the amount spent on all here, $2, $3. So for this specific campaign, I had to stop set up at about 400 impressions. Uh, granted, you'll notice that occasionally you'll get some that 
go a little bit beyond that. And honestly, considering the amount spent is still pretty affordable, I'm not too broken up about that. But just to give you some context, the reason why this happens is because for some reason when you set up the custom rule, Meta scans for it about every 30 minutes. So in this case of this 800 impression one, uh, within like a 30 minute threshold, they went from 400 and gained 400 more impressions, which really isn't a lot in the grand scheme of things, again, considering it's four bucks. But that's why sometimes you'll see a bit more skewed results, but we at least have a bottom baseline of 400, and that's enough volume to have comparable data. So now I wanna show you guys how to actually interpret this data, because yeah, it's all great, but how do we actually interpret it? And I'm not gonna tell you guys just to look at results, and the reason why is because that's the one issue Issue with outliers like this. Of course, this one is going to have great results here because it had a little bit more potential to it as far as the impressions that we incurred from it. So the significant columns you're going to be wanting to look at when you're drawing your data insights are going to be cost per result, cost per thousand impressions, cost per click, click through rate, and then finally either link clicks or if you're doing the send message one, then it's going to be cost per new message started. That being said though, both with link clicks and new message started, you have to take into account the number of impressions. So you cannot simply look at link clicks because in this case, link clicks was the result. So it's a still a little skewed. So what I like to do is filter on cost per results, cost per thousand impressions started, cost per click, and click through rate. And so the idea is when you're clicking through all of these, if you see creatives that are consistently coming up at the top of your results, those are clear winners. All right, so let's go ahead and interpret this and I'll just walk you through how I was able to decide which ones were winners for me. So starting off with cost per result, first we filter on which ones were the cheapest. So I at least know that these top five up here, 50 cents and less, are going to be my cheapest and most efficient ad creatives that I have. See, the ones on here that are spending $3, $2 per creative is overall going to be an inefficient use of ad spend in the grand scheme of things. Like if we had shotgunned a couple hundred bucks onto my lowest performer here, it would not have been economical. Whereas for that same click or that same result, I could be doing it for 40 cents. Now moving on to cost per thousand impressions, this one can be very complicated. And I say that because you could have beautiful metrics, but then your cost per thousand impressions is the most expensive. See, in this case, overall, this top one here, still frame six, is my most successful one because the cost per result so good and as i'll explain here in a bit the click-through rate's good however as you can see it's telling me that it's going to cost nine bucks per thousand impressions so what i like to do is take into account cost per result slash cost per click so that's one metric cpm is one metric and then click-through rate is one metric so out of those three metrics if cost per result's great and click-through rate is great but cpm is mid it's still a good creative or if cpm is cheap cost per results cheap but click-through rate isn't the best it's still a winning creative. But if you're running into an issue where CPM is expensive, click-through rate is shit, but your cost per result's good, you have two tiers that aren't satisfied, so it's likely not gonna be a consistent winning creative. Another thing to note is CPM is best analyzed against identical creatives. So it's hard for me to interpret this top one with uh, some of these other still frames that I had that are more closely related. But if you look at the actual spend on the closely related ones, you're able to draw insights there as well. Uh, in this specific one, I kind of mashed a bunch of different creatives together because I know what I'm doing. But ideally, you won't change many variables when you're actually going about this yourself for the first time. All right, then click-through rate is one of my favorites to interpret because this is really showing like how many eyeballs you're getting. So for preface, the higher the percentage, the better. So this is telling me that people that are scrolling, 2% of them are stopping to watch my video. 1% of them is watching to stop my video, right? And I also want to note that Honestly, these numbers are not impressive, but it's because of the industry that I'm targeting. On this creative test, I specifically targeted businesses, and if you know anything about targeting businesses, um, usually the results are a little shittier, so you end up having to put up more money, and it's really just because they're so used to being sold because so many people target ads towards businesses. That being said, though, if you're a B2C business, you'll usually see higher click-through rates for end users, especially if it's something really engaging. Like for some of my clients that I run ads for, we're doing like 7%, 8% click-through rates. Again, it really just depends the industry and the demographic you're targeting. Anyways, to tie it back in, so click-through rate is the highest here, and still frame three, both still frame threes are very competitive. Going over to cost per click, we've still got still frame three up top and there's my still frame six again. And then moving it back to results, but also taking into account the fact that you know, we have some that got higher impressions. If anything, this proves that these are winners. These got inferior impressions as far as 400, 500, 400, 400, 
and they still managed to beat out 700, 700, 600. So it took less impressions and we got more results. So as far as what I'm going to be running my actual ad campaign, I'm going to be taking these three top creatives into account in which I can dump hundreds of dollars into a lot more confidently because I have proof behind the creatives themselves because they've already got previous engagement and I know it's going to be a winner. But yeah, guys, that's all for me. I hope you found this valuable. If you're curious to see how you can apply these creatives into an engagement campaign to actually convert leads, I'll be linking my YouTube video at the end of this video that acts as step two once you've got your creative set up, how to actually create an engagement campaign to get high intent leads DMing you on Instagram and Facebook for you to convert into clients. And like always, if you have any questions, reach out to me on Instagram and I'll try my best to answer them and I'll see you on the other side.